Is societal collapse imminent? Are America's best times behind her? And are we witnessing a major change in our society and our lives as we know it? Today we'll be analyzing an idea created by a Scottish historian named Alexander Fraser Teitler called the Teitler Cycle. <laughs> What's up, preppers? I'm the Community Prepper. Today we'll be discussing the Titler Cycle. I am brand new to YouTube, and I'm asking you all to do me a solid and like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please leave a comment below sharing your thoughts about this video. After much contemplation, I decided that my video debut on YouTube should be about the Titler Cycle. What exactly is the Titler Cycle, and what is its relationship to prepping? Well, people who don't know history are bound to repeat it. By studying history, we can make better predictions about what may be approaching and how to best prepare for it. If we look at the Titler Cycle, it explains that most nations throughout history have followed a similar pattern of escaping bondage and oppression, then winning their freedom, and eventually turning to complacency, leading back to oppression. It illustrates where people free themselves of a tyrannical ruling class leading to liberty and abundance. It shows the pattern of rising and falling, slavery to freedom, from authoritarianism and back to authoritarianism. By examining history, we can see there are only a probable number of outcomes that are certain from any situation. Human nature is not so different throughout history, and by studying such, it can teach us a great deal about the future. So let's get into just what the heck I'm talking about. And now, for a history lesson, nerds. <clears throat> this is a very simplified history of the United States of America, outlined within the confines of the Titler Cycle. Alexander Fraser Titler was a Scottish historian that lived during the same time as America's founding fathers. Titler is credited in finding that societies throughout history followed a similar pattern lasting on average 200 years, starting with a civilization's freedom and ending in eventual bondage. Titler is credited with saying, quote, a democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves largesse from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury, with the result that a democracy always collapses over loose fiscal policy, always followed by a dictatorship. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations has been 200 years. These nations have progressed through this sequence from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage from great courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to apathy, from apathy to dependence, and from dependence back into bondage. Just think of great civilizations in the past. Did you think that during the heyday of the Roman Empire, they could imagine a fall of their society? What about the Ottoman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire? the dynasties in China, the ancient Egyptians. Should I go on? Could you imagine the look on Alexander the Great's face if you could tell him that Macedonia would cease to exist after 600 years of prosperity? My point is, is that America may only be a blip in history, falling into the history books as a great nation that once existed. So let's study a simplified history of America and discuss what stage we might be in, in the Titler Cycle. Now let's look to the United States of America. Founded in 1776 when we fought and won our independence from Great Britain. Prior to 1776, America was called the United Colonies and was under British rule from 1607. Prior to that was when the original pilgrims came over from Great Britain seeking religious freedoms. From 1576 to 1620, the United States was in the bondage phase of the Titler Cycle. The separatists in Great Britain wanted their own church one different from King James I's established church. 
the Separatists and Puritan escaped bondage by fleeing Great Britain and King James I for the New World. The bondage phase ended and a new world entered phase two of the Titler Cycle. Once out of bondage, the pilgrims made their way to the New World. When they started their new society, they drew up a document which created the first civil government called the Mayflower Compact. This document set a precedence towards a representative government, one that would be later adopted and used still by our current system in the United States. With spiritual freedom attained, the people were now driven and primed to demand their independence from Great Britain. Liberty is often achieved through conflict, war, and with great carnage and sacrifice. It was no different when America fought for their liberty and independence from Great Britain. From spiritual faith and with great courage, the people won their liberty. Officially on July 4th, 1776, the most powerful and prosperous country in history was created. From the separatists fleeing Great Britain up until the Declaration of Independence, America was in stages one, two, three, and four of the Titler Cycle, bondage, faith, courage, and liberty. Prosperity and abundance in the United States was partly due to the amount of precious natural resources held within its borders. From forests to fishing, farming to mining, the United States had it all. Seemingly unlimited resources led to the advent of more affordability, longer life expectancy, a better quality of life, and the Industrial Revolution. Automobiles, electricity, communications, and radio made it possible for families to live outside of big cities. Americans begin to live further apart and in the suburbs. The production of mass media, entertainment, more leisure and time, easier lifestyles began to turn the focus of Americans. A change was in the air, maybe a change for the worse. Did everything really start going downhill in the 60s? Political protests, the sexual revolution, the welcoming of Eastern religions, there was a climate of radical activities encompassing mainstream America. Traditional values of work, family, religion were being replaced by a consumption-oriented lifestyle. Self-realization and self-fulfillment led to the greed and self-absorption of the 1980s. Us and we were replaced by mine and me. Self-satisfaction and temporary pleasure superseded the old-fashioned values we saw during the previous stages of the cycle. Traditional family values are replaced by contentment in their own lives. People lost sight of caring about their neighbors, their street, their town, their city, their state, their nation. Complacency is defined as a feeling of smug or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievements, ultimately, leading to apathy. People are giving little regard or appeal to matters of great importance. Involvement and contribution have re been replaced with I don't care and whatever. Political involvement, especially among the young, is looked upon with disinterest and something that will never affect them. They are unconcerned and indifferent towards big issues that can and will affect their lives and the lives of the children they leave behind. Religion is dead in the eyes of many Americans. Some people think there aren't any consequences for their actions on earth. There's nothing to answer for or to, to a higher power. Politicians no longer read bills that are proposed. They've abandoned their constituents in search of self-interest and accountability is nowhere to be found. With unchecked culpability, the government grows to a monstrous authoritative power that the founders could have never dreamt of when writing the US Constitution 230 years ago. God is replaced by government. Parenting is exchanged for teachers, media, pop culture, and the state. Ask not what your country can do for you has become what does my country owe me today? If you expect too much from the government, you will become a slave to the government. Freedoms and rights are becoming privileges that are dispensed by the government. 
the size of government and people's dependence on government is miles away from what the original founders envisioned. The people have allowed this to happen in the complacency and apathy stages. It is a slow drip, a boiled frog's effect. It's the Overton window of how much the government can do to its citizens in a time of what is perceived as acceptable. 100 years ago, asking people to pay 25% of their yearly wages to the government was unthinkable. Three years ago, telling billions of people to wear a mask may have been unthinkable. What may have been taboo in the past just may be mainstream in our futures. So I ask you viewers, where am I right? Where am I wrong? What stage of the Titler cycle do you believe we are at? Are we experiencing too much government overreach and dependence? Do you think we are at a point of no return? What do you think I got right or wrong in this video? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please keep it to a civil debate and have respect for others commenting. Now, how does this tie into prepping? Given the state of the country right now, it would be in all of our best interest to begin storing extra food, water, and strengthening your supplies and skills. Hard times may be coming. We are currently facing a wide variety of potential threats from a pandemic, foreign wars, supply chain issues, crime, civil unrest. The best thing about prepping is that even if you prepare and nothing happens, you've lost nothing. I don't think the country as we know it will disappear overnight. I think it will be a slow burn over the next many years that will lead to major changes in our current system. I wanted to address the Titler cycle in my very first video, but societal collapse is just one of many scenarios that can play out in our lifetimes. Preparing for a variety of situations will put you in the most advantageous position to lessen your suffering in an emergency. That's what we prep for, the unknown. I wanna ask you again for your support to help this channel grow. The best way you can help my new channel is by subscribing, hitting the like button, and commenting below. My goal is to do weekly videos on prepping, product reviews, current events, survival skills, and my tip of the week, just the tip. Hit the notification bell so you know exactly when a new video has been released. Thank you for watching until the end of my very first video. I am the community prepper, and remember, refuse to be a victim.